Hello everyone, Lock Garden and Bread Lady here coming to you guys with a video and in this video here we're going to talk about um parrot poop. I mean we all do it, they all do it. <laughs> Let's talk about it. And I do have Casper, he's, <laughs> there he is. He's behind me preening over here, getting all pretty for the camera. Guys, so let's jump into the video. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If this is not your first time, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you do decide to join the family and stay and hit that like button, that subscribe button, and of course, ring that bell. Now, I always have to put this out there. I, this is a very diverse channel, though most of my, in, my content, I do try to keep it centered around parrots in some kind of way, but I just come downstairs and I just talk about, hello, sweetheart. What an intro. They can't see you from the microphone. Anyway, as I was saying, this is a very... Why you keep digging up your nose, doodles? As I was... Oh, you dug up your nose and you touched me? That's gross. <laughs> Now, as I was saying, I do try to keep most of my content centered around carrot parrots in some kind of way, but I just come downstairs and I talk about whatever I want to that day. I have a journal and a MacBook full of topics that I research and things that I just like talking about, things that mean a lot to me. This channel is so diverse that I'm pretty sure you'll find something that you like. So make sure that you do turn on the notification bell. So if you are here for the parrot only videos, make sure you won't miss those whenever I post them. Now, um... To my new subscribers, thank you. If April sent you over from Parrot Playhouse, let me know. Um, thank you, April. If you're watching, thank you so much. And I know a lot of people were sent over from April. So if April sent you over, just let me know. Speaking of April, you go to her website in the description box below and get you one of these cool look how, look at Victoria. She's so cute. Like I never thought Victoria could look cuter, but Victoria is like awesome. That's my baby. That's Casper's girlfriend. He got he has dibs on Victoria, so y'all leave leave her alone and y'all leave him alone because they're gonna they're gonna hook up one day i'm going out to california and it's gonna hook up one day <laughs> but thank you so not when i say hook up i don't mean hook up but they're going to connect one day but they i raised the gentleman with virtue and we all know that victoria is a cockatoo a lady cockatoo of virtue but if you do want to go and support april um uh, i will put a link to these shirts in the description box below as you know i believe she has 10 parrots and um if you buy toys from her if you buy um shirts from her phone i have i actually have um, I'm not shooting with my phone, so I took this off so you guys can see it. I actually have the Save a Parrot, um, phone case as well. I have an iPhone 11, so I don't know, and I think she has 12 on there as well, and she has Androids as well. So, just to give a quick shout out to April, and again, if she sent you over, let me know down in the description box below. So, I'm going back to work, learning a new language, dealing with health issues, so I'm sorry if I don't post as much as you want me to, but I will try to be more consistent with my posting. Uh, it may be shorter videos, um, but there's a lot of topics, especially parrot topics that I want to cover. So make sure you turn on notifications. I am not a, I always want to put this disclaimer out there and let you guys know that I am not a parrot expert in no way, shape, form, or fashion. I don't have any credentials for me to sit here and say I am a parrot expert. I don't, I haven't taken any classes besides the small classes that I've taken when I adopted um, Casper. So there's no nothing for me to say that I'm an expert. I am not. Um, all I do is I just research, research, research. Um, and when I find something that interests me, and I think that a lot, and I don't find a lot of content about this, um, I only found two videos about this on YouTube. So. Um, I will link those two videos in the description box below, but there are so many videos that talk about, you know, what to do when your parrot gets sick, how to tell when your parrot is sick, and they mention poop, but there are no videos strictly talk, well, there are only two videos that I was able to find to strictly talk about parrot poop. Now, um, a lot of times when a parrot get, and anything that I see in this video, I do recommend that you go and research it for yourself. Feel free to correct me if you want to, if I got something wrong, please correct me because I don't know everything just like about the puppy pads um, I said in one of my videos I didn't know that they were treated with chemicals that can be dangerous for my parents I didn't know that um, they swell up like diapers so now I use um, a different I use the adult incontinent pads and I was ensured that they do not swell up um, like diapers do and they're not treated with any chemicals so with that being said just do your own research if there's something I get wrong please let me know because I want the best for my parents as well as your parents as well Feel 
free to correct me, but just don't be a jerk. <sighs> I hate that I have to say that, but I get a lot of jerks. I get a lot of jerks. Believe it or not, I get a lot of jerks. But moving on, um, remember that there is always an exception to the rule. So I recommend that you consult your if something feels off go with your gut and contact your avian vet as soon as possible i've seen a lot of forums where people online have contacted have talked to other parrot people who aren't vets and there was a lot of misinformation there um i hope this video doesn't have any misinformation in it but always go with your gut if something feels off if something doesn't feel right make sure you contact your avian vet before doing anything else what are you going, Doodle? So, let's jump right into the video. Um, there's no way that I'm going to be able to cover everything when it comes to parrot poop because there is a lot. Believe it or not, there is a lot. So, there's no way that I'm going to be able to cover everything. So, I always recommend you do your own, work, own research. And remember to, um, there are exceptions to every rule. Even when it comes to poop, there are exceptions to every rule. The reason I wanted to do this video is because birds can hide their, hide their illnesses very well. We are parrot owners. We all know that birds can hide their illnesses very well. It's not because they they're, um, it's not out of spite or because they're being stubborn or too proud. It's a survival mechanism that's inside of them. Just instinctually, they know to hide their illnesses because a sick bird in the wild is a dead bird in the wild. So predators can pick up on a weak or a sick parrot. So what they do is they hide their illnesses so they won't seem to be weak or ill and they won't be singled out by predators. So it's just something that they do instinctually. When parrots do begin to show signs of illness a lot of times it's, it's too late. They usually have a day or so. I've heard stories of parrots dying hours after they begin to show illnesses. So they, they are very, very good at hiding illnesses. One thing that they can't hide, they can't hide their poop. You know, they poop a lot if it's a big bird. They poop a lot if it's a little bird. Um, It's just the, uh, they're just poopers. Birds are just poopers. Early detection is the key. And the way to early detect if your parrot, whether or not your parrot is sick, is because it's from their poop. Like we deal with their poop all day, every day. Usually in the morning times when you get that big chunk of poop, I don't care what kind of parrot it is, when it's daytime, that morning poop is just, oh my God. I look at um, Charlie, oh God, I'm missing Charlie. I look at Danny sometimes and I'm like, how did all this come out of you you know that big morning poop and that's the usually the poop that I spend the most time looking at and examining to make sure that it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with them um throughout the day I take note of what I see and then I if something doesn't look right I will contact the vet now their vet a drive for me is over two hours you are so weird a drive to the vet for me is over two hours it's almost three hours and because I'm definitely afraid of driving on the highways like the interstate I usually go the back road so it ends up being like three and a half to four hours just to get them to the vet now if it's if they're having a problem and it's a rush I will battle my fears and I will drive them on the highway um to their vet on the interstate to their vet now one thing that my avian vet does is he will allow me to keep antibiotics on hand I can call him I cannot give, he he does not want me to give any, any antibiotics to my parents without consulting him first. If he if I let him know what's going on, I send him pictures, um, we FaceTime, whatever we do, um, if it seems like there is a problem, he will recommend that I bring them to him. If he think it's not anything too big, maybe a little minor infection that they may have, he will recommend a dosage and um the amount of time and he always tells me if it doesn't clear up within one to two days then you need to go ahead and call me back and, and bring them in start coming up here call me and let me know that you're bringing them in but the reason i i don't want to name the antibiotics that he allows me to keep on hand because it is available to be purchased online but over medication over overly medicating parrots especially when it comes to antibiotics is a real thing as well and it can cause liver damage kidney damage if it's not overseen by a doctor 
and I just don't want anyone to just go out and just buy something that your vet didn't recommend and you ended up doing more harm than good oh again overly medicating parents with antibiotics is a real issue and that's that's for another video so depending now normal poop it can vary depending on that parent's diet now which I'm gonna talk about the most common and what I see in my birds because I know like um is it lorikeets I think they are nectar um eating birds um lorikeets I think that's what they're called so I don't know too much I've seen things online but I'm not really going to focus on on that but just the most common and especially what I see with my parrots so first off I want to talk about the, a little bit about the anatomy of parrots like most animals is in, and humans we have two parts one part one two organs one organ for the urine and one organ for the feces so it's not coming out together but parrots on the other hand though they do have kidneys they don't have like bladders and an organ for the urine and an organ for the um poop it all comes out together so you have one organ in a bird for both the urine and the poop when it all comes out it all comes out together poop of a pair of feces or excrements of a pair they fall it is in three parts you have the urates what the urates is the urate the urate is the like crystalline part of the urine so it comes out like a chalky white color it kind of looks like maybe elmer's glue so it comes out as a chalky white color um the second part that you have is the urine it's going to be like water it's not um yellow or yellowish you need to drink if you have dark yellow pee drink some water but um it doesn't come out like the color of human urine or dog urine um it comes out as white I do want to apologize and I actually meant to say it comes out clear not it comes out white so the urine part of the feces it is white not I keep the it again it is clear not white and it's a little cloudy that's okay because all that means it is the the whiteness of the urates and the clearness of the urine it all um, it mixed in together and it can come out a little cloudy um the third third part is the feces now this is the only real solid part of the poop or the excrements it should come out tubular and um it can be in strands coils or broken up into smaller but yet still tubular pieces so the feces is actually the only solid part now one thing about one thing about parrot poop is it should not smell there should not be a smell to your parrot's poop if there is a smell there is something that may be wrong and we'll get into that in just a second but now if it's been sitting for a while or it's in a moist or uh, a humid area it can become smelly but it shouldn't be sitting for a long time it shouldn't be um to the point that you know mold is growing on it and all the other things that I found while researching this, I found that, you know, some poop had, you know, maggots in it. And, of course, things like that, they're going to smell. But if you clean your parrot's cage the right way and it's healthy poop, it should not smell. Now, uh, if there is a bad smell or a foul odor, that can be signs of infection in the digestive tract. So you want to definitely consult your avian vet if the, your parrot's poop has a smell. Now, uh, it could be either a bacteria infection or it could be even a yeast infection so if there's a smell to it make sure that you contact your avian vet before it gets worse now something it has been noticed that when a parrot is really stressed they it becomes more watery it's like a it, it's due to their fight or flight response when um they panic they will expel any waste in their system prior to flight um you know how someone like saying they're so scared they blank themselves you know urinate and it can even happen with you know humans humans can be or other animals can be so afraid that they can urinate or um defecate on themselves and that's what birds do when they get afraid that flight of that fight or flight response will kick in and next thing you know they're 
it's spilling the waste and they're trying to get out of dodge um it usually when they're afraid it usually consists of more urine and urates um than anything now if it's an ongoing stressful situation then you will begin to see more urates or urine than you will actually begin to see um a feces so you may you definitely want to check that out if you're seeing too much if it, you're if you're seeing too much water and not really any feces your parent may be stressed so you definitely want to check that out um it's kind of, I don't want to call it catch-22, but like I said, when in doubt, call an avian vet. So if they have been drinking excessive water, that can cause their urine or their, their poop or their excrements to be more um, watery as well. If they've been eating, like when I give my parents a shower, they're... Um, I notice that their es excrements are more watery. They have a little bit more water in it because... Casper loves to drink the water while I'm shy, while I'm misting him. He loves to like, uh, like he's drinking, drinking the water. He likes to, uh, so he does drink the water while I'm misting him. Once he, he's gotten his feel, he's really clean. He begins to like play around with the water and drink the water. So I do notice that he does. Um, and then that poop after that is a lot of water and not really much feces in it. So, um, after that, Another thing is when on shower day after they get a bath, they are preening themselves. So as they're preening themselves, they're ingesting some of that water as is that water that's on their feathers. So that can actually cause their that's another reason. That's another reason why after showering, you're tearing up my chair. I should have bought you some toys and I'm sorry. Um, um that's another reason why after they get their shower they actually end up spilling more water than actually feces more urine or urates than, than feces so um and it, uh, it can also have something to do with what they eat because if i feed them watermelon lettuce um cucumber things like that things that consist uh, naturally consist of a lot of water you're going to see more um urine or urates in their um feces and actual feces so whenever he eats watermelons they eat watermelon uh, I already know it's going to be a little bit more water. So if you know you've given them a shower, they drank more water, or um, they've eaten something that has a high water content, then it can be nothing. It can be just that they're expelling that excess water out. Now, color is another thing that um, can mean a problem, but I'm going to tell you what normal is. We're going to talk about normal first. Now, um, colors can change depending, depending on what your parents eat, just like you're going to change the minimum of eat. But, um, Casper and Danny, they're, they're, um, excrements don't look the same. They both eat fruits, vegetables, and Burr Street Bistro. Where the difference comes in is the pellets. Casper only likes, um, natural colored or brown color pellets he will i can get him the fruit blend but he really will throw more of them out than he will actually eat because he's really doesn't like the color of them like uh i think it was the grape ones he will only eat like the orange ones and the red ones and the yellow ones um even with the vegetable blend kind he only ate the green he only ate the long stream bean type so i'm like i'm wasting too much food with him throwing this food out and um so i have him only on nutrient on only on zupreme natural as far as pet pellets go Every now and then I give him some um, nut blend. So he really does like the lighter color nut ones. He won't eat the dark color. He's pellet racist. He will not eat the dark color ones. He'll only eat the lighter color. He's a colorist. <laughs> He's a pellet colorist. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, because he mostly eats natural um, pellets, his um, poop is going to be like, it's, it's like a more of like a brown. On the days that they eat more vegetables, you're, I'm going to see more greener color poop. On the days that they eat like blueberries and blackberries and their poop is going to be black um, or dark color. Danny has some problems with his feathers. Don't know why the vet said that he didn't have mites, scales. Um, he wasn't plucking. There was no signs of plucking. It didn't look like the feathers had been ripped out. It looked like they had just fallen out and it was an extreme molt. But I really think that something stressed him. Um, 
like my it happened it started happening when my stepson bought his dog and his dog was actually sleeping downstairs with the parrots and the dog would just like howl and scream you know how a new puppy is you know you can't help that that's just a new puppy so it would howl and scream if someone wasn't there and during that time that's when Danny really started to lose started to lose his feathers so I really think that it was a stress thing for him that he lost a lot of his feathers because of stress that's what I think but the vet said he was extremely healthy no signs of stress no signs of illnesses nothing and this was a few months ago but um uh, it was recommended the um uh, the breeding blend Zupreme to put him on that when he does eat pellets and it's like the color of the fruit blend but it has more amino acids and thing and protein in it um, for breeding birds and though he's not a breeding bird he still needs that extra nutrition um, so he eats that when he eats pellets and um, so his poop is a different color because his pellets are a different color. Just remember that seeds and veggies will naturally produce green feces. If they're natural pellets or natural no color then it, they're probably going to have like a rusty color um and if they are eating colored pellets then their poop is going to be colored the color of the of the pellets all mixed in together which is yeah <laughs> so colors can also mean a problem so if you feel something is off again contact your avian vet um I'm just going to break the color down into parts. So first you have, we're going to talk about your race. Your race is the call is the chalky white part. So, um, if the your race is green, there can be, if the your race is green or yellow, it can be, it can mean liver damage, a liver disease or anorexia. If it's brown, it can mean lead poisoning. If it's red, it can be internal bleeding and usually in the lower digestive tract or that can mean kidney disease. If it's an increased urate, it could mean dehydration or possible kidney problems. So moving on to urine. So the urine is the clear watery part. If the urine is yellow, that could be a sign of liver disease. If it's red, it could be internal internal bleeding as well and usually also in the lower digestive tr tract can mean lead poisoning or kidney disease and increased urine can mean some type of bacterial infection. So let's talk about the feces. When we talk about the feces, um, if it's black or tar light, then that can mean internal bleeding in the higher digestive tract, not the lower, but the higher. You remember in the lower, um, that is the eucrates or the urine, but urates, I probably said eucrates this entire video, urates, um, if it's pea green, that can mean uh, that can be a sign of liver damage. Um, if it's white or clay color, then that can mean there's something wrong with their pancreas or they have some type of dig digestive problem. Now, if they have diarrhea, if their feces is loose, soft, if their feces is soft and not tubular, then that can actually mean that they have diarrhea and that can be an infection. Just like us, when we get infections, our body tries to expel all the bad out of us um, and get rid of those that bacteria by releasing. The same thing happens with parrots. So if you see that it's a lot of more, if they're pooping more frequently than usual and it's loose or, or if it's soft, and it's not tubular, then you definitely want to make sure that they're, they don't have diarrhea. If the feces is mostly feces, but not any urine or urates, it may mean that they're not drinking enough water and it can lead to dehydration. So definitely if they're not drinking a lot of water. That happened with Casper one time. Um, I had put some vitamins inside of his water and he's too smart for his own good. He tasted the vitamins. So it, he got to the point that he did not trust me with his water anymore. He would not drink water. So what I had to do is I had to start. He likes drinking water out of water bottles. So to get him enough water in him, I had to just let him drink out of the water bottle. And what I would do is I would take the water bottle and I will put it in his pan in front of him so that he would know, you know, she's not putting she's not doing anything to it so it took him a while to trust me again with water but I started noticing I didn't notice that he wasn't drinking the water um because he also sometimes splashes himself with water and so it looked like he was drinking it but when I started seeing his poop how solid it was and there was not really much 
liquid in there I knew he wasn't drinking enough water so um I had to find a way to get that and I'm like why isn't he drinking his water and then I remember he tasted the vitamins so he didn't trust his water anymore so now um we've gotten past the whole he has to see me fix his water thing now I just sneak his vitamins and his food but um anyway so if you see that they have lumpy or undigested food then that can mean that there's something going on in their digestion tract where they're just not digesting their food and completely um it could be nothing it, or it could it could be something so like i said if when in doubt contact the vet so there's geridia and geridia is an intestinal parasite that is usually it's rare um but it can actually happen when there are there are poor sanitation and where um the water source is unsafe. That's why you change your parents' water every single day with them dumping their food and all this kind of stuff and leaving their food in there. And Danny would sometimes hang on the cage over his water bowl and poop in the water bowl. Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't know. All I do is clean it up. But um, there's also hypermotil, which can actually cause the um, intestines to just over to react too much or excessive movement in the um, intestines and cause them to um, poop a lot. And you definitely want to find out why. Because it could be a nervous system problem or it could be, you know, something like a parasite. Or So you definitely want to check into that. So, and you also want to keep a lookout in your parents, um, excrements for segments of worms. Because, you know, worms don't come out especially like a tapeworm or something like that. It comes out in segments. It's rare that you see like these long worms come out all together. They just come out in, they're, they're segmented, come out in, in sections. So you definitely want to, if you see a segment of a worm, in, in, no matter how long it is, trust me, that's not the whole worm. There's still something else going on up in there. Sorry about that. That was kind of sussy. And on that note, I'm going to end this video here. There's so much more that I can talk about when it comes to poop, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this type of video if you like me talking about this type of topic which who likes anyone talking about poop but it's informative so if you like informative topic let me know and again i'm not an expert i research there's so much more that goes into it so feel free to research for yourself and add some things down in the comment section below and again if april sent you over please let me know down in the description box below so thank you so much guys for watching and as usual to the loo bye bye